Renee, it's so great to have you in Boston. Thank you so much for coming oh. up and, and talking to me and to, and to us about, you know, you were an amazing part of this Shaw 54th work mm. that we did. And it was not just the res restoration of the monument. Mm -hmm. It was that platform for dialogue about race and social justice. You were an amazing voice in our first um, community conversation mm. about the power of public monuments and why they matter when we were in real life, yeah, feels like years right. ago, it decades does, ago. But then you came back and we were with David Blight talking about why they matter in a time of racial reckoning. Mm -hmm. And so you were a particularly strong and vital voice in that, in that prog programming and process. So we really, I'm so glad that you could come back and sort of reflect on that mm -hmm. and think about sort of how do we keep that conversation going? How do we keep the light shining on this work? Because it's very unfinished work that the 54 started back in Civil War mm -hmm. and that we are really trying to, to lift up and honor today. I think part of it, you know, Liz, first of all, thank you. It's really wonderful to be sitting here with yeah. you. Um, I think part of this kind of the interpretation of the memorial that you did uh, while it was gone, I think that's still very useful is to have kind of interpretive panels where people can yeah. really understand what is this monument about? Why is it in this location? Who is it even honoring? I think mm -hmm. some Americans who learned about the 54th, you know, regiment, Massachusetts 54th, um, still need a reminder of who these men are on the monument right. and who Shaw is mm -hmm. on the memorial. Yeah. And I yeah. think people are looking for ways of understanding monuments yeah. Um, yeah. and putting them in context of their lives and the way that they think about the past, but also the present and the future. I mean, these things are all tied together, right? They are, they are. Um, I thought it was amazing. One of the responses in Tennessee, if you saw, that they have put up a United States Colored Troops Memorial great. as a response to taking down a Confederate monument. It's perfect. And that's perfect. It's yeah, actually, yeah. The, for me, in my mind, the perfect response is right. to honor black soldiers in the war yeah. um, who both provided a lot of just ground assistance, but were also engaged in fighting. And so I think that yeah, kind of acknowledgement, yeah. I was really thrilled to see that in Tennessee. That's that so that I happened. know, especially in Tennessee. Yeah. So, you know, we do have this hierarchy. Mm -hmm. We do have the reality that Colonel Shaw was Colonel. So he yep. was on the horse and mm -hmm. the, the our 54th were the soldiers and they were marching. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to help people come to terms with it. I know David Blight, when he was speaking with you, mm -hmm. you know, a year ago, just said that's the that's the way it was. If it was white soldiers, they'd be walking too. But because they're black soldiers, there's a level of tension that we have to acknowledge. And how do we have, you know, if we can't put, in, say, we don't put interpretive yeah. panels up, how do we help people have a response to that, or even have a way to have a conversation about that? That, that can sort of put it into context. Well, and I wonder if part of it is actually using social media, uh, using things yeah, like you know yeah. Instagram as a way of talking about the memorial online. I know with my students, you know, this we just finished uh, talking about the Shaw 54th oh, Memorial. We did what a whole did section. What did they say? They find it really interesting, and I think for many of them, it was the kind of individual image of the black soldier. But also, many of them were really moved by that you know, the floating allegorical female figure. Yeah, so they found yeah. her to be somehow speaking to them uh -huh. um, about death, but also what is, you know, the notion of victory or moving forward. I thought that was kind of intriguing to me because I've never had students that is great. identify her as something that yeah, they kind of identify yeah. with. Um, I'm wondering if part of talking really about this hierarchy is to first of all talk about the legacy of equestrian monuments. So I spent a lot of time talking about Marcus Aurelius, actually, and the equestrian yeah, monument yeah. as a kind of type that gets set yeah. in the Roman world, right? Yeah. And so man's control over horse. And so I think that's and partly- And being high up over other up. people. Yep. And the beauty, I and mean, what's interesting about this is that it's, it's, I think the first time in one of the unique moments where it isn't an equestrian memorial, it's not the common man that, you know, proliferates mm -hmm. in the North and the South mm -hmm. of, of the Confederate or the, or the Union soldiers, mm -hmm. but it is the combining of those two. Mm -hmm. And, and it may be, this is the thing that people don't know if they don't know but that it's the first time black men were shown as individuals, as human beings and not caricatures. So today it doesn't, when you see it, you still have that gestalt of a hierarchy, but in context, in historical context, it was remarkable. Dawkins is also yeah. a particularly skillful artist. Oh and God. so there is a yeah. beauty to this monument that I think some people are resistant to, but there is a beauty to that. But to actually show United States colored soldiers fully dressed in uniform, 
is essential and, Amazing. and groundbreaking but for the time totally. period. Totally. And really. individuals, a young drummer That's boy, right. an old grizzled soldier. Yes. I mean, these were individual human beings, which was really so powerful. But what's the complicated thing about St. Gaudens is you wonder first, why didn't he use photography of the 54th, which existed? Yeah. But also there were 54th members in Boston. I mean, there's some interesting things about well, how he yeah. got to his models. People yeah. say that, and I think, yeah. um, I, I speculate, <laughs> yeah. that the, the photographs would have worked for sure. Yeah. But they were quite a bit older by the time he got yeah. into the, the modeling of it. So I mm. think he wanted men that were the age that they would have been when they were fighting. I mean, that's, mm. that's, I'm giving him that grace. It, it raises super complicated issues about yeah. that representation when there were 54th members who were alive. But they would have been older. They would have been older, um, yeah. You know, Photographs um, would have worked. There is this great essay that Greenall at the National Gallery has written that's about photography and the 54th and oh, the powerful use of yeah. photography by the 54th to send photos to their families, but this real desire to show themselves in the full regalia of the Union uniform, right? Right. right. Um, and what is, I think, you know, when you think about extending your education of the memorial, the life of I it. do think it's got to, it has to be in some way to meet people where they are, and I think that is social media I think you're or right. website. I think you're mm -hmm. right, particularly in, in a certain generation, for, for mm -hmm. sure.